really that's my bad um so we're back um in the future yeah we just restarted the stream <laughs> of course we're getting live into the game uh you didn't miss anything which is nice we're just starting the bands of course but uh i accidentally showed the link but we got a four and a half minute delay so <laughs> crisis averted um <laughs> they're making maverick off the board let's talk about that jesus yeah, two hard bridges off the board, which means it's going to be really difficult to be opening those reinforced walls. Usually, you would be using majority Thermite on this map. Some teams will use the Habana anyway for rooms like Study, where you can open the line of sight towards Vault, the line of sight towards the bar. Um, but with sites like Statue, you won't be able to open a big rotate to put that extra pressure in towards the Statue Trophy like connector area. Uh, that's going to really change the way that some of these attacks will pan out. That's definitely going to favor Grandpa Squad. Yeah, it'll be a very uh, difficult map to attack on. I expect we'll see a lot of defensive rounds. Mira and Echo are going to be the two defender bans. So, uh, I don't know. This should be a fun fun game, if uh, nothing else. I can't imagine it'll be too fun to attack on. But, uh, hey, that's not what matters, is it? We're just here for, uh, <laughs> here for the fun games. And really hoping that we can actually see a match. Because, yeah, last time around, weren't too lucky with that. Yeah, and actually, interestingly enough, in ANZ Pro League, which is where I usually cast, um, Great. we had a team Great known as Nixian. Oh no, it's going to be a, a drop nice and early there. Potentially a rehost coming out. All right, they'll get the rehost, so our observer will confirm that, and then we uh, we can get back into this. So we've got a little bit more of a delay. That makes me um, <laughs> reviewing the stream a little bit less impactful. So that's nice, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, with these uh, hard breach bands, it's going to be much trickier for the attack. Um, and as I was saying, in ANZ Pro League just a couple of weeks ago, we had a team, Enixian. Mm -hmm. um, they won a lot of attack rounds on Villa, actually not opening walls, but just by sheerly putting vertical pressure and then just pushing through to site and playing refrags and it was actually really well executed so it shows that you can get around situations like that um with just a bit of coordination so if grandpa squad can uh you know mask that from bread baggers maybe they'll hold on on their defenses or if bread baggers can coordinate they might be able to get some attacks yeah there was another team i was watching i want to say it was like team liquid or something that had a really good um attack i have it written down in one of my documents i'm going to try to look this up but, um, yeah, they managed to attack uh, without really using... I don't think they played a hard destructor while attacking on Villa. And they got, like, some really good um, good wins. Yeah, it was it was liquid. No hard destruction. And uh, they still managed to pull off a lot of uh, attacking wins here. Um, I was earlier on in uh, this season. Played a three or four for them. So it's possible, certainly. But this is typically a map where you think um, the attackers have it hard as it is. So... Um, having this as an extra disadvantage is just not uh, not ideal for any or for any team who's going to be attacking on this uh, on this map maybe though you could say that like typically um the reason why attacking can be so difficult is because like a lot of times there's there's impact tricks right with villa so a lot of the mm -hmm. times it's harder for those uh, hard destructors to open stuff up if you're not running a hard destructor i mean that's not really going to hinder you right yeah, not really. Um, and I guess the other thing that you could lean into here is maybe some teams stall out on attacks because they are a little focused on doing what they consider like correct procedure. So droning out, clearing utility, opening walls. And maybe that just really stalls out a lot of teams for a lot of their attacks. So by having no hard breacher, you're focusing more on just getting map control and working picks on site to actually get an execute happening. Maybe that works out uh, in some teams' favors if... Like we've both said now, we've got two examples at least of teams successfully attacking on Villa without hard breaches. Um, so maybe it's not as much it's not as much of a hindrance as we think. And I'm curious to see whether Breadbaggers will be able to pull out some of these attacks. Me too. I mean, you assume that if a team bans the second hard destructor, right? Like Maverick went first, right? So like that's fine. Um, probably like the the team that banned that wasn't expecting to attack with uh, or wasn't expecting another hard breacher to go down. But when you're the team who bans second and you ban that second hard breacher, you're probably aware that, like, you know, this is going to be tougher for us, but we have a strategy, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's not like they're coming in unprepared. It's not like they're getting caught off guard by the second, um, by the second hard destruction ban. When we get to that half swap, of course, and, um, and bread beggars move to defense or move to, 
who's starting to attack? No, 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 when Gravit Squad moves to attack, I should say. Um, then yep. that'll be uh, that'll be maybe interesting to see how they adapt. They got six rounds to watch how Breadbaggers do it, and if Breadbaggers are successful, then perhaps Grandpa Squad can learn from them and try to adapt to similar strategies. But uh, we're gonna have to wait and see, of course, uh, going through these rehosts. But yeah, yeah, it's, you're totally right. It is like uh, the team that banned out that second hard breacher. It's very much a "you've done this to yourself" situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you you would definitely expect that they have practiced that, or they are somewhat aware on how to attack the map without the use of the hard breacher and that is totally a situation where a game can just be won or lost in that operator ban phase things like that can just completely outfox your opponent from the get-go um so it could be a bold move that wins the team a match here or it could be a bold move that doesn't pay out at all well we're back in the game nice and quick thanks to the players for keeping that speedy uh for us and we'll go back to round number one so we've reset everything. Um, we've talked the operator bands to death. I guess we don't want to touch on the defense, but hey, it's Mira Echo. There's, what, is, what is there to say? Uh, you see it every single game almost. <laughs> Fair enough, whatever. Aviator Games is where we'll start off, which is also relatively standard. Um, one thing maybe we could touch on is I wonder if there's going to be a really aggressive run out. Because we did see that in the one round of Villa we've seen today. Um, OTF got aggressive and uh, threw their Jaeger outside, and it didn't pay off. I mean, really what we saw... Um, from OTF and their one failed defense on this uh, bomb site was that aggression just wasn't working. So I wonder if Grandpa Squad might try a similar strategy, and for them, I wonder if it'll work out. Yeah, it will be interesting to see whether they do that. One thing that's standing out to me a lot with their lineup is just denial. They have Mute, they have Mozzie, they have Bandit. So that mute Mozzie combo will deny a lot of intel. And then they've also got the Wall Denial coming in with the Bandit, which the Mute can combo for as well. So it's good to see that there's a Thatcher on the attack. Some of that stuff can be dealt with with relative ease, but it is just a whole lot of extra procedure that will stall out the attack or slow them down at least that touch and just help lean into that hard breacher ban. So we can start taking a look at the setup now. Uh, the dreaded mute mozzie combo is being brought by Grandpa Squad, and we've kind of seen a lot of teams um, comment on this. A lot of pro players and especially have been talking about how impactful um, this combination has been towards the meta space station in North America have really kind of started running over teams just due to this and there's been different results yeah well, they are going to try the same run that I was talking about it's not the same run but the same strategy you throw the Jaeger out the window very first round this time it doesn't result in a death nor a kill so grandpa squatter is going to get away scot-free um so okay a little bit safer and I'm glad they didn't immediately <laughs> lose one because Last time we saw this round, that led to a whole bit of a disaster. And he didn't even have those reinforcements down. So that would have been a reinforcement loss if he had died there. Yeah, that's a bit of a yikes not having the reinforcements down before the run out. But did survive, so lucky him. Doesn't get the roast on this occasion. Some nice vertical holes there being played by the defense, though. Something that could trap those attackers. They have got the buck, so they are going to go below for vertical play. K2 does pull off that angle. No, he is going to sit there holding it. And he's running the M870. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I'm interested in how that will go. Snuggling in a very aggressive smoke play. He's got this uh, deployable shield with him. Some grenades get tossed near him. I think that was down below. And realizing that there's grenades beneath him, he's going to just back off. Now he's challenging the buck. Meanwhile, his teammate, Cammy is getting a headshot onto a guy on a bear. So rest in peace, guy on a bear. That's going to be the buck down below who uh, was taken off the board. So no longer needing to worry about that vertical pressure. Perhaps the smoke will retake his position. I feel like that was a really great focus coming out of Red Baggers. Just trying to shut that down vertically. And then the counter play as well. This defense is absolutely denying vertical play. Frag's going on and off here, making it a three versus three. Half the round played out. This is starting to fall apart pretty quickly. I mean, not really favoring one side or another just yet. The attackers struggling to deal with a couple of these roamers. You can see Giddy right now firing into the library. Zedbox is down here as well, who's in the art studio willing to go for a bit of a rotate. Means that there's not a, a ton of pressure up top here. Only two players who are still inside of the bomb site, so you can maybe focus that down. But with Giddy watching the flank, it doesn't seem like they're trying to take that man advantage. I don't think it's a bad move to watch this flank. He's about to find. Oh no, the ADS though, thwarting his plans, and he's just gonna back off. Sees the arm of another player just peeking outside of the game. Dreaming, can he get this frag? Looking for the shotgun again in the hand of K2, but he's not able to do much with it. Unfortunately, neither player really hits their shot, so we just go back to a neutral. There's Vivid finally finding a shot on a K2, hitting the headshot in that one. And now the attackers lead with a player advantage. Now, K2 
Tito's looking to the bomb site. Silent inside of here. Now Z Box could have rotated back by now, but I think he's just currently on his way. Vivid going for this plant. Teammates trying to cover in 90. That looks like it's Z Box who's trying to push towards Giddy. Gets inside of the bomb site actually, so he could uh, start causing some damage. Drops down. He's been flashed as well, but taken oh, down. No. Oh no, the teammate C4. Silent's there, and he takes down a squad member. Ah, oh, and Tito's the last headshot. Gives Breadbaggers round number one in a very chaotic back and forth round. Yeah, cha chaotic is a great word to describe that because it started just with a bit of a frag fest trying to deny that vertical play and the attackers trying to get in to try and put that pressure on. So it was hectic at the start. We had that lull and then it just kind of exploded. And that unfortunate C4 team kill, I was about to commend the Jaeger for hitting the deck and actually getting back into bar. But then his teammate decides to yoink the C4 and delete him anyway. <laughs> so unfortunate for them. And they are going to repeat that bomb site. Maybe not a bad move. I mean, it wasn't a, a lopsided round by any sense of the imagination. Um, I'd like to maybe see Snugglin stay alive for a little bit longer. Snugglin uh, was a Canadian player who played in the most recent Canada Nationals, and he was quite good um, playing on, I believe, a fourth place. No, no, no. He was on uh, second. I don't want to state facts I'm not sure about, but he was certainly like on one of the better teams. I believe he made it to land. So, uh, yeah, he's an experienced player. Grandpa squad as a whole are relatively old players. Um, kind of maybe coming back into the game if they've taken a break, or maybe they've just been playing it casually for a long time. One way or another, um, they're making a go at it here in CL Qualls, and they're doing pretty alright for themselves. Currently sitting in 11th on this uh, leaderboard. Again, top 16 make it to close qualifiers, and then top 6 from close qualifiers make it to challenge league. So, uh, it's a pretty, pretty clear path. Uh, Silence and the rest of the squad on Grandpa Squad seem to be on the right track, but again, with all of these teams, there's a lot of matches to be played before they can get to their goal of Challenger League. And speaking of Grandpa Squad, i got to commend their strategy in that last round. While they didn't win the round, I like their setup, and I really liked the holes they had to help them deny that vertical play. They've read into these bands really well by the fact that they know that attackers have to push vertically because they don't have those double hard breaches, so the best way to put pressure onto site is through that vertical play. So they're actually thinking about that uh, in a nice three-dimensional space, and that's really good to see from some of these teams. So now we've been playing in a similar position where he was at before. Kami's right in front of him uh, with the other uh, British operator, so they can try to duo that uh, staircase and maybe cause some troubles for the attackers. The Mute Jammer's already being a bit of a problem. We've talked about this Mute Nazi combo. Zedbox as well, uh, in the basement right now, continuing to want to commit to this roam. I kind of like it. I mean, it worked fine the last time. Ooh, that grenade almost catching out Snuggling. But uh, his roam last time around was pretty effective, and um, I don't hate that he's trying it again. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth trying again. And so far, not a whole lot of difference coming out of the attack besides maybe just being a little more careful. Buck has been tagged up. There is a trade coming out there to make it a 4 versus 4 though. And it's the Buck off the board again, the first pick. There's some more gunfights going down, and Giddy's gonna get this frag here on the Snuggling. So again, those operators at the top of the stairs have now been forced off or killed. So it's that early uh, engagement's going more so in the favor of bread baggers. The buck also dying early was a, a similar spot to what we've seen from uh, round number one. So it seems similar, but maybe a little bit better for bread baggers than what we saw previously. Yeah, they still haven't really read into this vertical hold or the holes above, and that is what's cost them that buck. They're heavily pinching this player down in the library though, so I don't believe this mute's going to last much longer. C4 not hitting the mark, and that's a great push through to get that frag. That puts them in a big man advantage now with still a minute to go. That's a lot of time to finish this attack off. Silent and K2. It's going to be all on their shoulders with one minute remaining and four attackers who are going to be aiming into this bomb site. You can see the red dot dancing along that wall. Of course, Tito's using some of those EMP grenades. Close on the wall, actually, is K2, and he fires off a few shots, getting down, and then eventually the kill onto Tito. So that's going to be one player, so uh, down on the attacker side. But you've still got a one-man disadvantage to try to work your way out of. Giddy perhaps maybe still worried about uh, an attacker down on the bottom floor, or perhaps just going for the rotate. Silent and K2 holding strong. Half of that time since they became a two-on-four has expired, so they've done a good job of wasting time and staying alive so far. Giddy has gone for the rotate now. And he's over in towards uh, Aviator. K2, however, from the side, caught off guard, and he's going to get down. Silent now alone in a one-on-three, unless he can pick up his friend. Unlikely, though. There's a C4. He finishes off his friend, and then killed <laughs> by Giddy. Two for two, Silent. Two for two C4s. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, his mate was down anyway, but yeah, that was yeah. a really 
a really good attack in the end. I like the isolation of the Romans downstairs. They did almost lose out to those holes above, but they traded it out nicely and they focused and they shut down the Romans. I just liked the thoroughness of their attack. Gave them a really good advantage advantage early. It just allowed them that extra time. We saw them rotate all the way around to red stairs with the diffuser, which can take quite a bit of time. And if you don't have much left on the clock, let's say only 30 seconds, you're then only giving yourself maybe 15 seconds for an actual execute. So that time management really helps them in that round. And they're looking pretty good on attack so far. Silent uh, continuing to be trusted with a C4 by his team. Um, two team kills in a row now. One of them, of course, a lot less impactful than the other, but fine. We move to round number three, and they're going to change their bomb sites up. Um, trophy Statuary is another fairly common bomb site to be played by defenders. Again, we talked uh, in the early stages of this match about how maybe this is going to go very defender sided due to the fact that uh, it's Villa and also due to the fact that the band's gone the way they did. Uh, two hard structures off the board here is quite detrimental. But they've been playing just fine with it. Breadbaggers have uh, been taking the fight to Grandpa Squad and just winning their ones. Um, hopefully this round will go a little bit better for G Squad. You can see they're starting to set up a relatively standard hole. Perhaps some uh, focus being played inside of Astronomy, which wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world, but always nice to see. And that's not a rotation into Bedroom, is it? Oh, no. Oh, okay. It's a, it's, it's a very interesting setup here. We're seeing a rotate go through into Bedroom, and instead of a rotate between Astronomy and Trophy, they've actually set up just a line of sight in that wall, and they've got double reinforcements on the side. So this is definitely a strange setup, or a, a new setup, you could say. I haven't seen this much before. I, I am really excited to see how this plays out. K2, beautifully played. He gets traded off. It's going to be a one-for-one -one exchange with the Thatcher coming out for the... Uh, oh, boy, for the Alibi. I think that's worth it uh, most days. We're really happy about 100%. that. Yep. Breadbagger is losing a very important operator, especially now. I mean, if they have a reinforcement in their pocket, close up that hole, put some bandit batteries on it, you're basically set, right? What are the attackers going to do? Absolutely. That is a great trade. Alibi basically has the dump and run utility style with her prismas. So if the prisoners were down, if you take out that Thatcher, 100% a good trade. It's going to make it a little bit trickier for the attack now. They didn't seem to have been leaning on Thatcher a whole lot. And as you said, that wall actually does have that rotate. They haven't reinforced it off. So they can still get this control of Master Bedroom and the wall. Kami is playing close there as the bandit though. So it might be a little bit tricky. They won't be able to open those other parts unless they flush out the bandit. Yeah, perhaps not knowing who they killed or also maybe not uh, having any more reinforcements in their pockets. Snuggling in the bathroom does get caught off guard as he rotates back uh, to astronomy and even farther south. Here's Giddy able to eat a grenade, but thankfully he's got some walls in between him, so he's not going to go down to that. Um, and Kami still holding inside of the bomb site, so this has been relatively good stall tactic coming out just after that Thatcher goes down and Vivid looking at this wall like, guys, what am I supposed to do? This is all banded and my Thatcher's dead. A fair complaint to have. Snuggling here on the stairs. It's going to be his teammate, actually. Cam, who gets the headshot onto Inyo. So that's another player down, and there's a great play by Snuggling. He gets traded off. There was that frag grenade from Guy on a Bear, but hey, I think, again, you're happy with taking these trades if you're on the defense. Now you're in a three-on-two, only five players alive in the entire server. And the attacker's a little bit split up. There's a great gunfight from Vivid. Panics a little bit, but eventually finds a shot onto Kami, a headshot even. So now your numbers, excuse me, are even. Yeah, and now they've got a really good opportunity to isolate these defenders. They are split up, as they are, as are the attackers. So there's two 1v1s here that could happen. The attackers are just holding some angles, though, trying to wait for the defense to make a move, make a mistake. But they are playing very patiently right now, just burning this clock. There's a lot of control that the defenders still have off site with these angles. The attackers are going to have to be ready for that. And they might need to drone it out, but no, Giddy will push through and actually get one. So it's a two versus one, all up to Z-Box, playing very patiently outside the statue doorway. And again, Z-Box was on a uh, far flank throughout most of this round, all rounds really. Finds a great angle, but oh no, misses some shots. Oh, but doesn't miss the next one. That's the fuser down on the floor. Knows that the Zofia has to push in. Giddy can't really go any other direction. He's got no time. Z-Box not giving up his position. He runs in now, but still somehow hits the shot. Giddy's just better, and Breadbaggers will take round number three. Oh, wow. You got to feel for the defense. That was actually such a good round for them. They played that really well. Um, oh. But dug deep on the attack. They just were played really patient. I think it's the best way to describe it. They held those angles for quite a while there, trying to force the defense to move around. And not only does that ice the clock a little bit, but it also gives the defense older intel. If there wasn't hard intel from cameras or something like that, 
they start to second guess their positioning and it really allowed those attackers to push through into trophy, get that first pick. And then they finally isolated that Jaeger, knew where he was in statue. And just a great shot in the end from Giddy. Unfortunate for Z-Box because I thought he played that really well. I don't know what happened or what his problem was in that engagement because that should have been his uh, his win. But I suppose just the information from Giddy knew exactly where that Jaeger was going to be and fast on that uh, trigger with the pistol. So really well played by the Zofia. Um, Giddy's going to walk away with the third round in a row for Breadbaggers. So if they were on the defense, that'd be a perfect rotation. Um, they're attacking though. And Grandpa Squad, best they can get is a 3-3 split on Villa defending. That's not great. And honestly, with the way they've been playing, with the way these rounds have been going, it kind of looks like it's going to be even worse than a 3-3 split. So, I don't know. You're starting to get nervous if you're G-Pulse squad. Yeah, definitely. And maybe they really have been outfoxed by this double hard breach ban in that Red Baggers seem very prepared. They don't look stalled out at all in these attacks. They don't look like they're having issues with gaining map control or where to be or what to do. Uh, they're just droning things out, they're moving through their processes, and it, it looks really good. I think that's got to be scary for Grandpa Squad, because not only are they down in their defense half, they have to attack with those situations. And if they're not as ready, it's going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, certainly not a great uh, spot to find yourself in. It's a similar strategy as the last time. This time there's no jump out from K2, even though it was very effective. That's not really a strat that often works twice. So he's going to stay safe inside of the closet this time around. He's got that Prisma there, but again, they're a little bit smarter than that over uh, on the side of Breadbaggers. So they're not going to shoot it, give away their positions just yet. They are going to have to clear it, though, if they want to be able to drone inside of that uh, closet or at least jump through that window because, yeah, it's going to be a problem for them if they don't want to get detected. Already some pressure here on the bathroom window, and they find yet another Prisma. K2, he's really set these up in great positions. Normally, it's not a common operator, the Alibi, but I like how it's being played in this round. I have to agree. No, often, I would say Alibi doesn't have, like, a massive place in a defense lineup, mm -hmm. but their main process here is to just delay this take of Master, and Alibi is a great operator to do that because those Prismas are in the way, one, and for two, even if the Alibi eventually gets fragged out, they just have to waste time. It's not a whole lot of utility lost if an alibi dies with all the prisms placed. So, yeah, I really like this so far. And it's almost half the round burned off. They haven't made any meaningful control. They're finally starting to flush out this bathroom position, but it could come back to bite them with only half the round to play. It's challenging that uh, Habana Pelts as they explode right in front of K2. Oh, man, here's the grenade finally punished for his decision. Bear is going to find that initial frag. And we're just past that halfway mark. There goes another one, Tito's. Finding the head of Cami, this defender is really starting to fall once again. The attack is so sharp from Breadbaggers. Coordination, spotting out these defenders, and perhaps being a little bit too uh, too aggressive. Snuggling finds another kill. Frag on to Guy on a bear, so as they walk into a strong, they do find a little bit of competition. It's really nice to see coming out from the smoke. A little bit closer to uh, where we were at before, but of course the round's not over yet. Yeah, and again, just this attack, digging in deep, just being thorough and finding these positions to flush out these defenders. They've, it's not like the defenders have been playing a bad defense. I think their setup is great. Uh, it's just either hit, missing the mark or this attack is just outplaying so far. You've got 40 seconds to hold this off. It is up to Silent and Z-Box. I sure hope Silent doesn't have a C4 because I fear for Z-Box. Either way, he's dead now, so it's all up to Silent in this one versus four. The only thing Silent can do now, well, I was going to say was C4 himself, but nope. He just gets shot by <laughs> Giddy instead. Um, perhaps a C4 himself would have been better, at least for the stat line of the match. Well, he goes down, and uh, it's four in a row for Breadbaggers. They are looking on fire with this. And I don't know, what's the problem with Grandpa Squad? For me, it might just be their positioning. Would you agree with that? That maybe they're just staying a little too aggressive for a little too long? Yeah, I think that could be it. Because their early round defense is great. Like, on their aviator defense, they had... Some nice vertical holes to deny that vertical play, which I talked about quite a bit. And even on the de defensive statue, they had the nice aggressive play with the alibi in the bathroom just to deny that map control in Master. I think that is all great, and it was all working out well. It's been stalling out the attack. But the attackers are just repositioning themselves and catching defenders off guard. And it's like you said, I believe it's probably them just being a little too aggressive. We saw Bandit trying to Attacking. peek real aggressively at that wall and around the master bedroom doorway. Probably, like, at a time he shouldn't be. Just surrender that. Let them push through. It's a bit of a trap at that stage. They still had C4s for the mile. They looked like they still had intel. Um, so, yeah, maybe that late round, they just need to rein it in a bit. Play a little bit more disciplined. 
Villa more than almost any map, uh, at least in my experience watching this, seems to punish uh, heavy aggression from the defenders, right? We see it We see it typically as a really strong defensive map, but typically that's because the defenders can really bunker in, find themselves in spots where it's really tough to get them out, go for a lot of impact trips, stuff like that. When you're just jumping out of windows and you're getting aggressive, you're kind of throwing away the advantages that uh, this map kind of gives you as defenders, so... I don't know, perhaps it's a playstyle uh, situation, maybe this was a map that should have been banned by Grandpa Squad, maybe not, maybe they were destined to lose this match no matter where they went, but uh, it certainly doesn't feel like the map is doing them any favours, um, however it'd be hard to say that anything is doing them any favours, currently down 0-4 in this matchup. They go back to Aviator Games Room um, for round number 5, decide hey I guess we'll try it again, not uh, not surprised they don't want to try that bottom floor because typically that's a pretty terrible uh, decision. And pretty much a similar setup again, playing similar holes, similar style. Silent tier on this first floor with the mozzie, so watch out teammates, he's got a C4 in his pocket. Um, but yeah, like they're playing it pretty similar, and to be honest, I don't think it's an issue with their strats. I really do think it's just an issue with how they're playing it out throughout the round. So if they can make those mid-round adaptations, they might be able to finally catch the attack off guard, finally get this round. So droning now, it's been a little bit slow from Breadbaggers. You know, they're still trying to work their way in. These Mute Jammers and Mozzie Pests have done a little bit of their work. There's Zed Box coming in big, finding the Capitao. Inro goes down. That's a really important pick to be able to take off. Similar to the Thatcher, when it goes down, I mean, it's an important operator, right? That's going to hurt you when you go for your smoke plant. It's going to hurt you trying to force out those defenders from their positions. But they just need to continue to uh, bunker down, right? Sure, Zed Box can run around and get some frags, but the rest of your team needs to play it a little bit more safe than they have been. Because just these attackers aren't going to give away their lives like that. They're just sitting outside of the balcony. They're looking into the bomb site. It's hard to flank a defender uh, where they're currently positioned. So, um, I don't know. I'm not sure that that's going to be the most important frag. It'll help them, no doubt about it. But, like, they got to be worried about this bulk of the attack. Yeah, and the other thing they have to be careful of is that first floor room can be cut off mm -hmm. uh, mid-round. So, if they dedicate too much to it and it starts to get ignored, it could come back to bite them because they can just hold the stairwells, whether it's a drone or physically. But it actually looks like it's going to get flushed out here. Giddy with a nice frag onto the mozzie there and Piano. Moving it up to Z-Box, but he's actually going to run away, and this is a good call. That's what we're talking about, them maybe being overly aggressive mid-round. He's actually just going to run away and preserve that man, oh, man equality. Sure. Uh, and give them 45 seconds now to repel this attack. Box, just weird positions on the map. Meanwhile, K2 and Kami, both of his teammates fragging out. Finally, something looks like it's going to be good for Grandpa Squad. Jumping in, that's a terrible idea. Snuggling is watching it and manages to frag Bear as he vaults on in to the 90 hallway. Vivid has been staring at this doorway for almost two minutes now. And uh, he's a little bit slow as the player peeks out, deals 25 damage to him. He's going to refocus his uh, eyeballs and then shoots to just run away. Not a bad move. Opens up a window, goes back to where he was initially playing, hoping that somebody will run out at him. But he's got 15 seconds, and the entirety of the defense are playing so, so passively. That's the right call. K2's getting the frag, and Grandpa Squad are finally on the board. Yeah, much better mid-round from Grandpa Squad. I just think that instead of playing aggressive, we saw it was uh, Z-Box on the Jaeger. Instead of pushing through to try and refrag that player around the piano, uh, pottery area, he just ran away and it wasted a lot more time and it allowed I believe it's K2 on that alibi to just reposition and get some better frags. So I really like that from them. We'll get them, or we will get to see them replay Trophy Statue now. So if they can make an adaptation on this site they might be able to get themselves a second round here and 4-2 is much more respectable. Yeah, I mean that's fine just given the circumstances um, as long as their attacks on this map are good and you think like they came here they had a lot of options to ban this map. They choose uh, not to uh, every single round. So they're on the map. Hopefully they're good on their attacks. Whether they win or lose this, they're going to need to be good on their attacks. But certainly, I think a 4-2 is much more recoverable than a 5-1, um, no, no matter the circumstance. So we'll come uh, back in round 6 and see what they want to do. It looks like the exact same strategy. One thing that I've noticed from these guys, they haven't really been changing things up. This is the third time they've been on this bomb site. They went to Aviator three times as well. And there wasn't a lot of variation, right? Maybe Silent playing in the basement or in the first floor was a bit of a little bit of a variation. Um, I think Zedbox's uh, rotations have been different every single time, just where he's roaming on the map. But he's still on Jaeger. He's still going for those roams. And for this map, they're still opening on in a, uh, in a bedroom. They're still playing K2 on the alibi inside of the closet. They're still sending Zedbox all the way to the other side of the map. So, like, I don't know. It seems similar. 
Perhaps Silent going for the spawn peak is something a bit different. He's just looking to ruin so and unfortunately for him, nobody spawned there. No, not gonna catch anybody off guard with that one. I think another hole that's been on the defense is Snug. Seems to be getting picked. Yeah. Uh, it's somewhat early. It's early for a smoke. So that denial is probably lacking a lot, especially in that mid to late round. For example, if they're able to hold off this master bedroom take again, they can just back away from that statue wall and they can use those smoke babes to really slow down and deny actually taking that. And that could just work in their favor again because we saw the passive, more patient play really reward them in that previous round. Really hurts to see from Snug as well. Uh, check the stats. It's actually Canada Nationals silver medalist. He uh, lost to Team Canada in the grand finals back in October. So not doing too hot here. Maybe this is the reason why he didn't get first in that tournament. Uh, his team not doing super well in qualifiers. <laughs> Still though, the attackers maybe having a little bit more trouble than usual getting into the building. They haven't gotten any early picks, which is better than normal for Grandpa Squad. Just as I say that, they lose one too. So this gets even better. K2 gets the frag and then most importantly manages to run away. Snuggling, flickering with that uh, Prisma as well. Gonna give away his position, but again, he escapes. So this, uh, this is exactly what you're talking about, right? Players staying alive for longer. This has been much better. Exactly, and now they just have to be careful because this attack has been stalled out, which means they will have to reposition and rethink the way they're approaching site. They're going to start to try and do things like flanks. We are seeing Giddy down on the ground. He might decide to try and push through up Astro Stairs or flush out from below as it is the Zofia. Either way, they will probably try and reposition, and this is where Grandpa Squad need to dig deep and not over-aggress. Kind of like the coordination up in Astronomy between Snuggling and K2. Had a position where maybe K2 could get a pixel angle. Meanwhile, Snuggles rotated all the way in through Statuary and he's looking into the bedroom. So there's an opportunity for him to silence all the way down instead of laundry. So he's in an interesting spot to maybe throw up another C4. There goes a fra uh, flashbang. He's not going to catch Snuggles off guard. He's throwing a lot of these toxic babes. And meanwhile, teammates are going down. There's Tito getting the frag on a Kami. Refrag Snuggling onto Vivid. So you're getting things back and forth. It's been good still looking in. Zedbox there as well inside of the astronomy stairs finds Kitty. So you're continuing to go back and forth. Guy on a bear finds K2. He's inside of the bomb site, so you've got to watch out for that. But he's all alone thanks to Snuggling with a double kill. And these last two defenders creeping up astronomy stairs. They've got Snuggling, of course, in the bomb site, shredded an eye. And now they're gonna have a good angle. Well, they don't need it. Snuggling's there with a shotgun and he's <laughs> ending this round 4 2. Yeah, having Snug alive for that much longer really helped them out. He used the smokes to deny their push through that master to take Statue. And he was able to eventually get a couple of picks there. And it really helps them cement that advantage throughout that round. So they ended up getting two rounds on their defense. Now the real story is, can they back it up on attack? Because we saw some great attacks out of bread baggers. And if Grandpa Squad aren't able to at least replicate that, they're going to have a very difficult time. Certainly, certainly. Now, assuming uh, they're going to stick the Habana, yes, they are going to at least have one hard destructor. Of course, uh, given the current ban system, you can't ban three hard destructors, so that's nice. Um, the Habana going to be still in this round, and if you are going to bring just one hard destructor to Villa, which isn't the craziest thing in the world, I think Habana is a fine one to bring, right? Helps that impact tricking, which has been a problem in the past for a lot of teams. Um, maybe teams would prefer the Maverick uh, either as an accomplice of the Bonner or perhaps instead. Um, but I think that you're fine uh, just with this if you really want to commit to the hard destruction strategy. And as we've talked about, like you don't necessarily need to, uh, to focus on hard destruction when you're attacking on Villa. You can make it work um, without that. So again, we're hoping that uh, we can see something like that from Grandpa Squad as they move over to the attack. Other interesting operators are, of course, the Lion. K2 uh, playing a bunch of weird ops, but they, uh, I mean, he's found success with them. I think the way that he was playing the uh, the Alibi in the last half, while certainly not uh, normal and certainly not all that effective uh, in terms of winning them rounds, I did kind of like the way he was playing it. I thought the positions in the windows were good, maybe a little bit too repetitive for my taste, but I thought that he was playing pretty much fine on that operator. Yeah, I really liked their use of Alibi in the Statue Trophy defense. Just delaying that master like bedroom take <laughs> is actually really crucial for a team that attacks that side. Sometimes you'll see teams go across from study, but not in this instance. And it usually burned about half the round, and that's something that you don't see a whole lot of. And I think that really helps them with their defenses. So I liked that. I'm now really curious about how they're going to utilize this Lion whether it is more to take map control a bit easier, or whether it's more execute oriented. Interesting hold by uh, Bear, he's inside a 90, he's got to deploy the shield to try to help him from the, I believe that's north. 
So he's got some uh, utility to try to work with there when someone tries to push in the 90 cover. Otherwise, though, there's not a whole lot of strange things going on for defense. Um, here come the vault into the master bedroom. So the attacks are starting to get into position where they want to be if they're going for any sort of a take. Um, oh, what am I talking about? There's, of course, stacking on uh, Aviator Games, but taking part of the map, which is nice. Um, you can figure that out a little bit uh, early. Starting to pop off these E1Ds as well. K2 can push forward pretty quickly with these. Um, and Guyana Bear is starting to find some pressure from the window, so gotta worry about that. And that's not going to be too difficult for this attack to flush out. I say that the Maestro has been downed. That shield, a bit of a sketchy position because it really does expose him from multiple angles. And all oh, this attack is just going off all of a sudden. Getting three picks. Getting themselves a huge five versus two advantage now with half the round to go. All looking like Grandpa Squad. Oh yeah, Gideon in a bit of a tough spot. Zedbox finds his triple on the round. Running around with a pistol in hand, knows who the last player is. He's screaming to his teammates, let me have this. But Kami steals it away from him. It's a flawless round as Grandpa Squad take it number seven. Starting to mount their comeback, and that's a really strong first step to take. Yeah, huge. And they really didn't lean on their Habana at all. They, they did finally open a slit in this study towards Bar. But at the end of the day, that wasn't really what won the won them the round it was that coordination early to mid round to clear out those roamers they got three really quick picks a really important one was that maestro at 90. i have to question that shield placement because yeah it would have been really difficult for somebody peeking from the top of red stairs or the trophy doorway area but it's so easy to flush out from that window or even if somebody went below let's say that sledge went below and opens the hatch an easy frag grenade would be able to come out clear the ads um yeah, I think that was too simple for them to flush out. That's got to change if they want to be able to secure 90 a bit better. So perhaps some, uh, some changes in strategy are needed. Um, we go back to the same site. So again, I hope that this means they've got some changes in their strategy in mind. When Grandpa Squad repeated sites, they kind of just did the same thing. And maybe there were some small adaptations, but the general theme of their defenses never really changed. I'm hoping Bread Beggars have a few different strats. As I hear that deployable shield go up, I believe that Bear is um, setting up relatively similar to where he was at before. He's at least playing in 90 again, just based on where he was at in the prep phase. Could certainly move, but... Um, We'll see if he wants to actually stick it up with that same deployable shield. Because I agree that it was an interesting one, and maybe not one that uh, caught the attackers off guard quite like he was hoping for. Yeah, they're definitely trying to create a stall point around 90, right? Because if you're attacking from the master bedroom side and clearing across, uh, you'll take a bit of time because you have to check with drones for roamers or that kind of jazz. Set up your flank drone, really important for the blue stairs. And then you have to tackle 90. That shield is still in that same position. Yeah, there's an ADS there, but he can't really play too deep close to that shield because he's very exposed in that window. So I'm still not sure this is going to create the, the stall that they want. Well, he's going to try it anyways. And last time, the Grandpa Squad were a little bit slow in approaching this. Perhaps this time, they'll just assume that there's no roamers on that side of the map and they can get a little bit faster in terms of approaching that 90 hallway. Not that it was a big problem for Grandpa Squad. I mean... Whatever time the clock was at, every time they found somebody, they eliminated them relatively quickly. So um, perhaps they're not too worried about speeding things up here. There goes a EMP grenade to stop this uh, bandit batteries from being too effective. Of course, they would like to open up that wall, even though it's not going to be the crux of their attack. Giddy here, and if, uh, he's trying to help, or excuse me, yeah, trying to stop this from being opened up. If he has any more in his pockets, he can go for that trick. But at the moment, it seems like he's going to let it stay unelectrified. Yeah, and there's that Maestro taken off the board halfway through the round. I believe that was the window repel player that was able to flush him out. But again, that shield's still not really being effective. Still questioning the decision making there, but they have burned a little bit of time here. The attack have a bit of a foothold now though. They have a lot of map control, not just master side, but they have some teeth into study. And Stag is pushing aggressive down that main hallway towards bar. So this defense is really starting to have a lot of pressure. Still holding on. Zedbox has almost got an angle on the player behind the bar. Of course, doesn't necessarily know that somebody's back there. He's got Snuggling trying to work his way in as well. Currently on that Thatcher. And Rose a little bit far off site. Could go for a really late flank. I don't hate that, especially if they're pushing into Aviator. There goes that ERC, and, or yeah, that E1D. And unfortunately, it will catch out one of the defenders. But it probably won't really lead to a kill. 
does give a little bit more information for later. There's somebody playing inside a vault, but that's not super revolutionary. There goes some frag grenades, and actually Silent lands it on a Vivid. Really well placed by him, that info really working out. Zedbox with another frag on a Tito's. So the attackers again starting to run away with things. Back behind the bar, it's Giddy, throws a C4. Not at his teammates, not at anybody. Finds nobody in. There's a frag from K2 under the headshot. In with the last man alive. Back on a flank, gets the double. Actually, this is doable. He needs to get two more, and Snug's in the midst of a plant, so it's basically a one on one. He gets off of it, though, and Snuggling will get that last shot. Grandpa Squad continue their streak. We're 4 4. They brought it right back. They have, and they've been great attacks. They're just getting good map control, and they're isolating flanks. There's not been nothing successful in terms of the flank. That Legion did have a spark of success, but at the end of the day, it was a four versus one, and there was no way he was going to be able to get all four of them because they had pretty clear intel at that stage. So some questionable strats, I'd have to say, that's not securing them enough of a stall in that early round, and they are going to rotate away from that. They decided it's just not working on Aviator. They're going to try dining and kitchen here. Yeah, interesting they don't choose to stay up on that top floor. Of course, that's a difference from what we saw from Grandpa Squad. When their defenses weren't working, they went to Trick Stats Roy. We'll go to Dining uh, Kitchen instead. Fair enough. Um, that's that's totally fine to see. Um, Grandpa Squad, though, starting to run away with things. And the difference here, of course, is that Breadbaggers got all of their rounds on defense. They got four in a row. And Grandpa Squad are two for two. So perhaps that means that Grandpa Squad are going to continue because they're not swapping sides uh, ever again unless we head to overtime. So I would say the Grandpa Squad are actually in the, in the lead position right now, at least in terms of momentum, at least in terms of what we've seen so far. More likely than not, Breadbaggers are going to have to go back to Aviator Games at some point. So if Grandpa Squad can continue to lock down that bomb site as they have been, that should be another round for them. They're at least five. They pick up one more on some other bomb site somewhere along the way. And uh, that's, that's your six points, one more, and then you can get that, uh, that sweet W. So... Looking real good for, for G Squad as they're now going to attack on this bottom floor. And we'll see if that hinders them anymore. It is going to be a bit of a top floor roam. So that's probably going to be the, uh, the strat first off is clear out these guys. And with a mute mozzie, that's not going to be easy. Definitely not going to be easy. They do have the Thatcher to help them out at least a little bit. And this is the first time we're seeing Kitchen played on this map tonight. So whether that helps the defense or the attackers, we'll have to see. So far though... This defense looks good. This roam vertically set up is going to slow down these attackers. They're going to want to take Master Bedroom and use that sledge to make some holes and start to displace those defenders playing down on site. There are quite a few people off site though, not necessarily uh, in that Master Bedroom area. We could just see one playing around the Astrology Stairs and they could... Oh, he could find that pick, but he doesn't actually shut down by Silent. So again, this attack off to a good start. Yeah, great play by Silent to be able to stop that uh, in its tracks. You've now got a player add, and oh, Giddy finds something coming through his window. He now has to back off. Silent's, of course, on the other side of the window and doesn't necessarily know that the player playing on Astronomy Stairs has just run off, but he's still going to have to slow down and uh, wait for his teammates to drone for him regardless. Um, the rest of these attackers just staring at doorways, most of, uh, most of them. Here goes Zedbox starting to open things up in the basement. They seem to suspect someone's down here. They were right. There were players down here before. I believe they've retreated out. Tito's maybe would be the one you'd expect to be down there on the pulse. But currently he is not. And he's actually spotted the attackers. So more likely than not, there will be no rooms for the defenders to actually go downstairs. Unless Giddy wants to challenge him head on. Which, hey, fair enough. He gets stopped on the stairs. That could be bad for him. But no kills come off of it. Yeah, and this could come down to timing. They might be able to burst onto site here with this attack before the flank is successful. Vivid takes some shots, but not hitting anything. The Zofia has been tagged low, but he's actually getting flanked. It does come successful is the castle, but they've got just under a minute to go. It's a four versus one. It is all up to Giddy. It's gonna need the ace clutch in this. Zedbox going for this plant. Should be able to get it, no problem at all. Snuggling's chasing down the player who's retreated back in the basement. Knows he's probably behind this hatch, and that was smart. Giddy was down towards that area, but didn't take any damage from it. Still looking to get in a gunfight. Somebody right to his right, and he's going to hit that shot. Gets the down and eventually finished off with a pistol. There goes Snuggling. Two in the round for him now, but again, it's so unlikely he's able to get all three kills and the disable. The time obviously not on his side, and he has no info at all. He's pre-firing every angle that he can. Silent is all the way up top. He can go for this rotation and just make some holes up above. Really smart play by him. Going to be almost impossible to pass as a counter. Giddy's now trying to deal with all of these holes, and of course you don't have to play aggressive. There's Grandpa Squad eventually closing out the round, thanks to a nice shot from Zebbox. 
And they continue their streak. That's five in a row. And they, for the first time, take the lead. Yeah, they're just steamrolling through these attacks now. And that post plant positioning was just fantastic. They had a great rotate cut from outside that China doorway. And then the Zofia to flank around to get to reuse those Habana holes on top of the vertical play. It was just really well executed. There was no chance that this castle was going to be able to get that clutch. And they really are just carrying all this momentum now. It means that the defense are going to have to try another bomb site, which is going to be trophy and statue. This game has just been something else, man. Uh, the strategies we've seen come out from both sides really have been uh, very interesting. And uh, here comes the dock. Well, no, no dock coming, unfortunately. Bear's going to move over to the clash, which is considerably worse. And Bear actually gives up a six pick. But can you really trust that? I mean, probably not. Yeah, and I, I am curious to see how they implement this clash, whether they're going to try and use that as a delay of the master take or a delay of the study side, or maybe even a late round hindrance to just slow down some kind of execute or plant. Either way, the attack do have what they need to deal with that. The Lion can help, the Zofia can help, Thatcher Sledge, almost all of these operators can help shut down this clash. And considering some of the coordination we've seen coming out of Grandpa's squad on their attack, I wouldn't put it past them to not really be overly bothered by the clash. Yes, certainly. They've got some tools to deal with it. Hopefully they won't be uh, too stalled by it, I would say. But that's a lot of, um, even ignoring the clash, it's a lot of like anchor operators who are being brought out, right? You've got, of course, uh, your two German ops that can go run around the map, but then you've got, again, um, both the smoke and the maestro. It's going to make it pretty tough to push on in. And again, I kind of think that's the strength of Dylan in a lot of cases. You want to be able to lock things down. You want to be able to like, bunker in and uh, do your best. Silence on the sledge, leading his team through the basement. And again, this seems to be the strategy being played out by Grandpa Squad. A lot of the times they prefer to go uh, through the basement, which is interesting because not a lot of teams really touch that area of the map. It's just another way into the map, I suppose. Um, but it's weird, maybe wasting a little bit more time than they need to just to get a bit of a clear and or perhaps lose their life to somebody who might be roaming down there. Yeah, and it looked like they wanted to do a bit of a sneaky entry there up the stairs all the way into Astronomy, but that Clash at the top will stall that out. So the Clash being somewhat effective for that at this stage. Lion on the window here, not going to be able to do too much to the Clash, a bit of pressure. That smoke might also start to receive some pressure if this drone so finally spots him out, which it does. Which means they can vertically flush him out. That's a great impact grenade from Low. I mean, this smoke is very much under siege in this astronomy room. Oh man, the foot almost visible to Zed box. If some of that, oh man, if he just had a little bit better of an angle, a little bit more open up, he certainly could get that. He shoots his lifeline up, perhaps he'll uh, have that information. He can shoot to the floor, but unfortunately, he doesn't go for it. And that's a clash up top. It's going to make it pretty difficult for him to find anything. There was a toxic babe. So that's going to stall the attackers on Astronomy Stairs a little bit. But of course, they can just wait that out. Here's the pings and through the floor, Zedbox gets it down. Of course, he doesn't know that he's got that. However, the drone was there, so he should be able to finish it off. And there it is. Zedbox finding the head of Vivid through the floorboards, eventually securing the kill under the smoke. Took a long time, though. Again, that clock just closing in on one minute. That's a good stall, I would say, overall from the smoke. Yeah, a good stall. And that's going to be an ill-advised pick from that bandit. A little over-aggressive. Again, it's something we talked about in the first half. It was just this over-aggression late round really costing these defenses. They need to be just sitting a little bit more patient. And this attack is coordinating so well. The fact that they've cleared out Astronomy at this stage. Oh, no, actually, player has replaced. It's, oh, it's the Clash. Trying to use his gun, but... Oh, he does get that pick. No way. Bears on top of things, hitting that shot really well done by him. Again, uh, Zedbox has been a really big fragger in this match. There's in row with a frag, guy on a bear as well, but here comes Silent up the astronomy stairs. Gets the refrag onto bear, and now he can continue pushing from that angle. There's K2 with an angle on the in row. So now it's just all going to be Tito's left alive in a one on two. Wins the first gunfight through the window, finds K2, and it's Silent versus Tito's. Silent inside of the bomb site does not have the diffuser, so he's going to have to go pick that up. Constant pings for Tito's. He doesn't need to play aggressive here. Now Silent's aware of this. He knows that he can just push aggressive and try to get the frag. Goes back for the diffuser instead. That uh, diffuser gets picked up, and Tito's is aware. He's still got pings. I don't know that Silent has the time. He's going to go for his plant, but Tito's is in that room. So Breadbaggers will take the round. Finally stop the bleeding. But man, is it too late? Oof. Probably not too late, but it's... Yeah, it's close. I mean, Breadbaggers, they just held on. It was really well played from Tito's on the Jaeger there. It was all attack, basically, until that final 30 seconds 
the defense started to claw it back. On the back of some great play on that clash. Pretty fortunate to actually get that pick on Astronomy Stairs. Not sure how the attackers didn't capitalize on the fact the clash was unshielded. I believe there was two, two of them that could have had an angle onto the clash. So maybe just one slight mistake from the attack have cost them that round. Is now 5-5, five, five, so it's really tight. Neck and neck. They're going to have to repeat Aviator. We've seen them lose it twice in pretty dramatic form. So will we finally see a big change? I hope so. Again, uh, Grandpa Squad have kind of torn through this bomb site um, whilst they're attacking, if nothing else. The attacking lineup really hasn't changed much, and I doubt it will, just because of how much success they've found. The defenders, however, have changed quite a bit. Bears moved over to the Ella, which is weird. I don't know if I've seen an Ella on Villa, certainly not for a long, long time. Um, I'm wondering if she's running the Scorpion, or whether that shotgun's going to be uh, in his hands. One way or another, probably going to be playing some sort of a close angle, perhaps going for a bit of a flank and just trying to run around the map. Will be neat to see. I'm also uh, questioning whether we're going to have another um, Maestro inside of 90. Now, Inro's on the Operator, and he's not near that uh, part of the map at all. We're still in setup phase, so he could move over that way. But uh, if they're changing that up, then that would be you know, a nice change in my mind. Yeah, I'm still seeing that shield there, though, so I'm a little concerned that maybe they're going to stick this... 90 hold, which definitely wasn't working out for them in those first two rounds. It is the Scorpion on the Ella, mm -hmm. so I'm not 100% sure what exactly this strat is with that Ella, whether it's just, again, a delay of taking study, um, which we didn't see the attack is taking super hold hard last time. Most of the attack came from the master side, so I I'm questioning why not maybe dedicate a little bit more to stall out the master push, because look at this, we already see Zebox in taking this control into astronomy, setting flanks set up. Uh, it's pretty efficient so far. Yeah, the attack from Grandpa Squad hasn't changed a whole lot. You know, they come from the other side of the map. They're going to run through Astronomy. They're going to run through Trophy. Um, they get all the way through if they possibly can. Vivid has to face up against next Kairo since he's getting a little bit disoriented. That's going to get opened up right next to him. Inro again, sort of forced off of the shield, playing in a weird spot on that 90 uh, hallway. So perhaps he's able to get caught off again which would be a big loss for the defenders. These hard anchor operators need to stay alive late game. He challenges the window with the Alda, and because of that, he looks like he's going to escape back inside of the bomb site. So perhaps that's the strategy. Maybe it's just, let's put some utility there, and then let's back off. The back off part just hasn't really been working the last couple of rounds. Definitely a good call to back off and save that operator because that older is just too good of a weapon to have late rounds uh, and not worth contesting positions, especially like those windows. So that's a good play. Guy on a bear still sitting on top of these stairs at the Ella, just trying to slow down that study push. He walks past that drone, not really deciding to push too deep though. And the attack is just getting a bit of control, being a little bit thorough, but they haven't really got the picks that they've been relying on so far. Not just yet. You've again got a bit of a roam. Tito's down here. He's going to get stalled out again. These uh, lion charges have been really oppressive for the defenders. Breadbaggers struggling a little bit to maybe go for the flanks that they want to, but perhaps they just want to stay uh, silent down here. That's not a bad play either. I don't think Tito's has been spotted. He is right behind somebody, so this could be a really good play by him if he times it right. His teammates are going down, so he needs to start moving. That's the Maestro off of the board. Henro has fallen. Here he goes with an opportunity. Finds the back of Zed Box. A great frag, but Cammy's there to get the turn frags, and his whole team is falling around him. There's Snuggling as well with a kill. It's going to be just giddy and vivid left alive trying to hold this down in a two on four. Holding inside of the bomb site. These attackers have made their way in. They've got the opportunity to plant if they need to. Cammy's holding that diffuser and he's got some positions. A great shot from Snuggling. Gets the second of the round. The last player alive inside of the hunting vault. It's vivid. He's got those toxic babes. He's trying to stop the plant, but it's way too late. Now he's all alone. He's just got the SMG 11. And this is looking like a very tough retake for him. He's got to push out into some sight lines. Takes a bunch of damage. He's now on very little HP. He's almost having to give up in this situation. Goes for the frag and can't do it. Snuggling, three on the round. And they had some such good delay. They had a much better majority round, I guess you could say, defending this site. And then it just all fell apart on the back of some really good coordination from that attack. Just picks them to pieces on site. And uh, I'm not too sure what breadbaggers can really do to save that bomb site because that is three rounds now that they just haven't looked in it, really. Uh, especially late round. They're going to go for it again, Jesse. And I'm worried for them because these... These attackers just look so comfortable attacking Aviator. I mean, I get it. Like, I really wish they defended Trophy in round number 9 instead of round number 10. 
right? They threw the dining in there as a bit of a curveball, but that didn't work out, and they won trophy the first time. The fact that they played it in round 10 means that it's locked for the rest of the regular time. So um, perhaps they changed that in round number 9, and they could play it right here in round 12. But no, um, playing that a little bit late means that they're forced to either go aviator again, or they could try dining, or perhaps living room. But aviator's the call and um again i want to see some changes uh, both of these teams it feels like they're almost banging their heads against walls when they're going for these defenses right time after time after time the strats aren't working the strats get repeated i think there's been a little bit more variation from bread baggers right of course the ella got brought in last time um this time there's a valkyrie here so there's some changes being made but there's not like huge strategy changes right it's not like we're taking this strat it didn't work we're gonna try strat b it's like we're taking yeah. this strat we're gonna modify a part of it hopefully it works perhaps at this yeah, level the teams just don't have a lot of strats yeah they're just the changes they're making just aren't having impact mm -hmm. and that's something they need to think about and especially now they are down six five so this is do or die essentially um, if I were them, I'd be making some pretty dramatic changes. It's clear that this attack is majoritarily coming from Master Bedroom side. So maybe just trying to stall them out on that side a little bit harder. So similar to what we saw in the first half with that alibi stalling out in the bathroom area. Just some kind of Roma that just delays it a bit, shoots some drones, pulls back. They don't have to sit there and, you know, just die. Um, just slow it down because... This attack is just taking so much map control really quickly on this side, and we're about to see it again, it looks like, with these drones just clearing out Statue, clearing Master, clearing Astronomy. They're going to get that control really quick. Tito's is there to try and contest, but he's playing it pretty passively still. This game's so important for both teams. Again, battling for that top 16 spot. Both of them are a bit of a fringe team, so every point matters, and this is a game you look back after all the qualifiers are done saying, if only we'd won this round. Well, this is going to be it. Your opportunity to win it five on five as we enter the second minute of this match zedbox finding one on the stairs as tito's of course getting droned out he was that aggressive player perhaps now going to be forced to back off just to the fact that he has been spotted guy on a bear however his teammate saving him perhaps with zedbox going down thanks to a c4 they're now just four players away from pushing this into overtime that would of course be a huge win for them and tito's has found a new hiding uh, spot just behind the corner I like that a lot from him. This is actually looking like a better defense, and you notice there's no uh, deployable shields inside of 90. Yes, they finally ditched the shield, which is fantastic. And like you said, I really like what Tito's is doing on this roam. He's contested early or earlier than they had been, and he's getting a couple of picks. He's actually getting... He's on a double kill now. Man is going off, and all of a sudden it's a 2 versus 5. This defense is looking so much better. Snuggling alone to deny the overtime. Unlikely. He's been all right and so far in this match, up and downs, but with a minute on the clock, he's got to find five frags. That is a fair amount of time, um, and you've got the diffuser, but again, a one-on-five is never going to be easy. Giddy's going to give him an opportunity to win a fight, but unfortunately, Snuggling's just not wanting to take it. He's got that L8 in his hands, looking for someone behind him as well. The pinch is starting to come on in. These defenders not willing to play this passively. Inro just peeking back and forth. Good God, <laughs> this is annoying to try to fight against. He's still not able to hit anything. Oh, sure, geez. why not? Throw it a C4. It's a flawless round for Breadbaggers. We head to round 13. Yeah, it's amazing the difference between their defenses of that site now. Like, seeing that strat compared to what they were doing, um, that was just so much more effective. And it just came down to trying to stand up to the attack a little bit earlier and not allowing them to take all of that map control because it was just giving them too much too much teeth in their attack and it just meant that the defense was stuck on site with little allowance to really push out so i like that adaptation they'll get to try a trophy statue again now they will have defense for this overtime and this attack is gonna have to dig deep Starting on attack is Grandpa Squad, so they're going to have perhaps the advantage in this um, in this overtime. Because of that, um, they'll maybe feel a little bit more com uh, comfortable, especially with having a little bit more of that uh, momentum, winning more of the rounds in the second half. Definitely would say that this is starting to favor them, despite the really rocky start that they got off to. Um, they're looking okay. They call up the dock again, but again, it's Bear just six picking over to the Clash, so <laughs> seems like a repeat of what we've seen before. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this was the round. Yeah, this was the round that they won. So this strategy has worked before. Can it work twice? That's it, and it did come off the back of Guyana Bear playing really well in the Clash. He did delay, and he got a, I think maybe two picks on the Clash might have been one either way he had a really big hand in how that round played out 
Uh, one thing though is if these attackers do drone it out and they see that they're playing the clash again, or they they might even assume when they see that they're actually holding statue trophy. Yeah, especially uh, since they might. It off. Yeah, they might deal with it better because I don't think they really dealt with it that well last time, um, and that's the adaptation the attack will need to make. I certainly think it caught them off guard. I mean, even just based off of reading what they were talking about in chat, they were expecting the dog and it didn't happen. So um, this time I would expect that they were a little bit more prepared for it, as you mentioned. He's again going to be playing around a strong me. You've got a smoke in here as well. So like, again, it's pretty standard stuff. I like the shield a lot better than what they played uh, in previous. You could place it maybe just to the right of that desk and secure your retreat a little bit better, but I don't uh, I don't think it's as bad as what we've seen from shields in this match so far. The attackers mostly focusing on looks like the closet, bathroom, master bedroom area. Not uncommon at all. You've got a lot of bodies over here actually. Not sure how many they have over on the flank. The drones are in, right? They've definitely spotted out the clash by this point in time. It's really just gonna be about how can they disrupt this hold and uh, start getting some early picks. Yeah, really gonna have to displace those defenders around, especially if they want that astronomy control, because that clash is gonna take a bit of effort to clear. On top of the fact the smoke is playing there and can use the smoke grenades to stall them out. It doesn't even have to be denial, it's just to stall the take of that map control. And it even sounds like Grandpa Squad are not ignoring it, but just cutting it off. They're gonna start to open some holes into this master wall. Giddy under a lot of pressure there. He got stunned as he was trying to place that bandit charge. Does mean there is a rotate in the middle of that wall and a big line of sight, and that is going to spread out that defense beautifully. Z-Box opening it up, half the round to play out now. All right, so you get your opening pick. That's a good one to be able to find yourself from uh, Grandpa Squad. Still got to somehow deal with this clash though, and that wall being fully reinforced uh, into the bedroom means that you've only really got one tiny little angle to try to crouch walk your way through. There's Inro equaling out the numbers, takes down the head of Snuggling. Dealing with these drones as well, really well done by him. Here's the last EV1D getting popped off. It doesn't seem like any casualties will follow from it. We've got a little bit of info. You can stop those defenders for just a moment. We continue to tick off through this round. It doesn't seem like anybody wants to get so aggressive. That's a great Toxic Babe though. It really is, and he's still got another two in the pocket, so he can stall out that push of the bathroom for the majority of the remainder of this round. It's going to be really strong. That Clash is still there to deny the push through the breach as well. So there's going to be a lot of work this attack has to do if they want any chance of getting a teeth for execute. And this is going to be the last babe to push out. As, oh, what Ooh. a grenade from Silent. That coconut just dropping on the head of the smoke. And now it's 30 seconds to go. Silent dropping a Kobe. Rest in peace. We've got a three on four left inside of this match. 30 seconds to go. This is the first round of overtime. Nobody can win it here, but it's still such an important round. The Clash still up and at him. You've still got to find some way to deal with that. Of course, one frag grenade being used beautifully to take down the smoke. Could try to use another one if you still have it. However, the Clash not using her shield at the moment. Bear's just holding that gun and he's going to get rewarded. No, missing the shots at crouch level. Zedbox gets the kill. Now he's just alive with one player. Jaeger trying to come back in, but there's no hope. Unless he can stop this plant. Cammy's going for it. He oh, does it! No That's going to be the time! Bread Beggars will win it because of that. Oh, what a play from Tito's. Grandpa Squad are going to go down and Bread Beggars take their seventh round. Oh, you, you hate to see it. Mistake or mistake by the defense there to give the attackers a four versus one advantage. But Tito just going massive, pushing deep to deny that plant in that final stage. And now they're on match point and we saw how strong they were on attacks. If they can bring that up again, I've got to say Bread Beggars do have a chance to put the bread in the bag right here. <laughs> They're trying to grab it. I mean, what a round uh, from Tito's clutching that when all of his teammates were down. That's an attacker win. Now you just need to, or sorry, that was a defensive win. And the defense have really struggled so far in this uh, in this match. Now we're going to go on to the defense for Grandpa Squad. Um, they move over there. Bread Beggars just need to win an attack. And man, oh man, they're looking nice. Switch, uh, six picking over to the Ash. It's going to be a fun pick from Inyo. Again, he's been all right so far in this matchup. Um, I wouldn't say there's been any real standout players. Maybe Tito's um, has been big for his squad from Red Baggers. Otherwise, so it seems like it's been a relatively even um, even play by everybody across the board. KT's had his moments. Perhaps you'd uh, argue Silence has been a bit of a hindrance, but that was only the first couple rounds. I will say Silence has been uh, a little bit better as we've continued on through this match, so credit to him. Yeah, we, we reacted to him a bit about his uh, C4 misplays early. Um, but he has brought it back a bit and yeah, I've got to say Tito's has been stepping up because Yeah, he's not necessarily like gone off, but the frags that he's got have been very impactful uh, The aviator defense they won he got those early picks that stole them out and ended up winning that round And then obviously that previous round that we just saw 
him getting that clutch in that 1v4 to deny the plant is huge. Like, it's only one frag, but obviously the impact of that is immense. Uh, so, yeah, he's been playing really well. I'm really curious what the Ash will do. The six pick onto the Ash is a bit of a surprise. Maybe they're looking to have an aggressive play. I'd like to see maybe a bit of a rush. Try to end this match a little bit early. Don't let it go all 15 rounds and don't even let this round go uh, go too long. With two roamers down on that bottom floor, it could work out, um, especially with the way that they hold this uh, trophy site. It's so weird where they open it up into the master bedroom. They like doing it and it's worked once for them. So fair enough. Like if it's the strap that you keep on practicing, then I guess it's what you're going to do. But um, Caps would be a little bit vulnerable to a rush. Now, K2, I would say not playing as aggressively as he has been in the past, right? He's gone for runouts. He's played inside of this um, closet. This time around, he's still got those Prismas there, but he's playing a little bit farther back in the bathroom. Again, I think I like that. Yeah, I really I really like the utilization of this. And the attack looks like they've adapted relatively well. They're starting to put a bit more pressure using those x Kairos to flush it out. And the drones, the utility, it's really good and it has pushed this alibi back a lot quicker than it did in previous rounds all they have to do is just take this map control and they will have a much better chance here that pressure is just immense onto the alibi at all costs they clear that out and almost a double kill for the buck but the smoke downing him could be a four versus four coming up here yeah we're basically even that toxic they will confirm it there goes bear a four on four. Again, this is round number 14, an important one. There goes another defender. You're finding them all, but Snuggling's there to equalize 3-3 three, three now as we approach that one minute mark. This is going to get so, so tense. The defender's still going on a bit of a roam. Silence downstairs, waiting for his uh, teammates to make the call to go for that flank. You've got some attackers going for rotates as well. Tito's finds a very lucky kill on Akami, who's just behind that doorway. Poor positioning coming out from the bandit. Now you found yourself at a man advantage. Snuggling and Silent need to go big to not let this match end right here. Silent again on this roam. He's been spotted out. Giddy knows he's down here. It's going to be an engagement. Silent pushes aggressively, but he takes too much damage. And Silent comes out on top of it anyways. Still takes about half of his HP down, but it doesn't really matter. Hits the headshot, and that'll be that. We're back to a two-on-two. -two. Numbers all evened out. This is going to be so close. The attacker's got to feel the nerves coming on right now. Tito's, he's been so big so far in this matchup. He's got his Habana by his side. They're inside a master bedroom. They're making their way in. Just peaks. Vivid with the kill on a snuggling. He's going to start this plant. Silent, the last man alive now, needs to be able to stop this. Of course, he's inside a bathroom. He's not in a position to stop it. There goes the plant. Not inside a site. That's a huge misplay by him. They can set up the crossfires now on the attack. This could be all it takes, but this C4 is it good enough. It's not. Tito's is there, and that's going to be the match. Bread beggars, 8-6. to six. What a game. Um, first of all, just so close. And then second of all, <laughs> so weird. But man, that's going to be the match. 8-6. Yeah, we saw some great strats and some great plays. And the coordination, I have to say, an unsung hero in that last round, whether it was noticeable or not, was actually attacker intel. The amount of drones they must have had, we saw that nice pre-fire, I believe it was from the Jaeger, into that bandit on the hard right of Master Bedroom Doorway. That was fully barricaded. He had to have had a call out to peek that. So that's great for one. And then two, Giddy, when he pushed below to flush out that mozzie, he had a ping right as he pre-fired. So that intel was just really winning them that game. Uh, I really liked that. And the attacker coordination we saw from both teams was really good to see on Villa. You know what, Raven? That was a that was a really fun match. I'm glad that we got to watch that. After not getting a game in round number two. Me too. I'm really glad that uh, that match, while it wasn't the highest level of competition, was still a whole lot of fun. Um, I want to thank you from uh, flying out from Australia to Cassis. <laughs> Or at least uh, <laughs> <No problem. laughs> connecting over the internet to, to cast this despite the time zones yes. uh, differences. Huge thanks to Crater as well for observing these matches to us. Huge thanks to the teams that didn't get mad at us and played their matches when they were supposed to. Um, and shout out to the Twitch chat as well. You guys were hilarious this last match. Uh, I liked all the corn pogs that you guys were spamming as well. So <laughs> thank you for that. We're going to be back tomorrow. We are uh, skipping the first match as we usually do on this channel because I uh, have stuff to do on Tuesday afternoons. But uh, tomorrow, starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be back with these qualifiers. Round number five will be live then, and I'll be with a new caster. So, Raven, thank you again for stepping in for this match. And, uh, yeah, no I hope everybody has a wonderful night. I'll see you then. Yeah, see you guys.